In the last episode of Bite Size, I spoke to you about 8088 and 8086 chips and how 16 bit processors came before the 8 bit variants. In this episode, I'll be discussing how history repeated itself with the SX range of processors. The original 80386 was introduced in 1985. Intel's next generation chip with a 32 bit data path. The 386 did fairly well fairly quickly, but not quickly enough for Intel. The 286 sold well also, but the 286 had a problem as far as Intel was concerned. Intel didn't own the 286, and by that I mean that while Intel invented the 286, it had also licensed several vendors to make the 286, and so many 286s being sold were lining the pockets of advanced micro devices, Fairchild, Siemens and a number of other chip builders. Intel therefore wanted all the profit from the 386, so they refused to license the 386 to any other company. The 286 was not only a cheap chip, it was also a 16-bit chip, and a pure 16-bit chip at that, both word size and data path. That meant that the 286 PCs could be built around 16-bit motherboards, and 32-bit motherboards were just going to be plain expensive. Therefore, 286-based PCs would be tons cheaper than 386 variants, and so more 286s would sell than 386s. Intel didn't like that. So, they embarked on a campaign of what has to be characterised as chip infanticide. They ran a huge advertising campaign advising people to stay away from the 286 and to buy 386 based PCs. They also answered the manufacturers concerned about the costs of building a 32 bit motherboard by offering the 80386 SX. The SX was a 386 with one difference. Its front door was 16 bits, not 32 bits, just like the 8088 was 8 bits instead of 16 bits on the 8086. Now, the vendors liked that because they could take their old 16 bit 286 motherboards, modify their design a bit, and voila, they could offer 386 technology. After a year, it became clear that the original 386 needed a name, so it became known as the 386DX. Now, the 486 line of chips also included a 486SX, but was it a 16-bit chip? No, it was a chip with reduced functionality. But the reduction was not due to changes in the data path. Instead, the 486SX was different from the 486DX in the way that it calculated arithmetic. And that will lead us to a discussion on numeric coprocessors, which we'll talk about in a future Bite Size episode. The early line of Pentium chips also included an SX-like chip called the Pentium Overdrive. The Pentium uses a 64-bit data path, but 486 manufacturers wanted to include Pentium compatibility on their motherboards. However, 486 motherboards are 32-bit in nature. How then to offer Pentium compatibility? Simple. This is where Intel's Pentium Overdrive chip, which features a 32-bit data path, came in. Kind of a Pentium SX, you might say. Was it a good idea? Sure, if your 486 motherboard could accommodate it, but the problem was, very few could back in the day. <laughs> 